Welcome back everybody, this is Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be answering a question that a lot of you guys have had since we put up the recent Liberty Suppressors video showing off the Goliath and the Sovereign. Uh, Eric was using his uh, 24 inch Remington 700 here. Um, this is an awesome, awesome rig. And that was literally the first time we ever had that thing out to the range in its current configuration. And uh, you guys are begging to know what we did, what components we used, how we put it together, the whole nine yards. Well, it's funny that you ask because Eric actually picked up two of these rifles and the base rifle is actually an AccuSport exclusive that they put together. It features a HS Precision um, internally bedded stock. Basically it's a fiberglass reinforced stock and it has a uh, aluminum chassis system embedded in the stock. Unlike like the Hogue overmolds that you see some of the uh, stock guns come with such as my 700 AACSD model that I started kind of modding and whatnot and improving on a few months ago. But also from the factory, these come with a, a tactical style bolt knob uh, pre-installed. They have the same Xmark Pro trigger, which is fully adjustable, but uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired as far as feel and quality goes. But the uh, heart of this rifle is a 5R fluted barrel. Now, this is a 24 inch model and Eric, like I said, also has a 20 inch model that I'll be getting to in a moment. There's a lot of science that goes into the 5R style of rifling. And what it is, is you don't have a land across from a land, so it's not symmetrical. It's an asymmetrical type rifle, and I guess is the, the proper term. But also, the, the lands don't have sharp edges to them. It's actually cut with kind of a chamfer, so it's a really, really smooth uh, interface between the projectile and the rifling. Um, and the 5R barrels are touted to be some of the most accurate out there. This rifle, uh, like I said, from the factory, it comes with those improvements, whatnot, and it takes the price up. I mean, these guns are, you know, about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars on the street, whereas my uh, early AACSD model that I picked up was under seven hundred dollars. But this rifle shoots out of the box. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, and we have made some improvements to this. We've got uh, a Badger M5 uh, bottom metal set on here that takes accuracy international magazines. We put a uh, Badger 20 minute of angle uh, elevation type steel base on here. And you guys have seen this base installed in a previous video where I was using my rifle. We have a spur uh, zero cant mount on here. This is a one piece, really, really solid mount. And uh, this has a, a Leupold Mark VI 3 to 18 by 44 power optic in here with a, a Horus H59 reticle. And Eric just put a, a little cheek riser on here and a little ammunition pouch and such. We got a Atlas bipod on the front uh, and a LaRue quick detach mount. And we're running a Dead Air Sandman TI on the front of it. This is a stainless steel core, titanium tube, direct thread, high, high quality can. Sounds excellent. But this is the rifle that we put together initially on just kind of as a test bed. And we have another identical rifle, like I mentioned, with a 20 inch barrel. And what we're going to be doing with that is taking both these rifles out. And we thought, what better way to test velocities out of a 20 and a 24 inch barrel than using the exact same rifle, basically. I mean, two separate rifles, but the exact same model. One's a 20 inch, one's a 24. And uh, we're going to use the exact same suppressor, the same mount, base, scope, the whole nine yards. Identical guns, save for barrel length. So what I'm gonna do in this video, it's not gonna be a full like assembly video. I mean, I'm not gonna drag it out and insult you guys' intelligence. We have other videos on like mounting the base and mounting scope rings and such as that, but I'm gonna go over some of the intricacies with this setup and how we pick the components that we did um, and the process and some of the little, little hacks and such that you can use to install these products. But um, basically starting with the stock, uh, the stock does come from the factory with the uh, four round internal box magazine. So obviously that has to go to be able to install the Badger bottom metal. Now this bottom metal is not a drop in unit at all. There is a considerable amount of milling that has to take place in order to fit this bottom metal to the stock, um, as you can see. Now we did have to send both these stocks off to uh, Badger's facility that they use um, to do the stock work. And uh, they came back and the work is superb. I mean, it's about $80, but it's definitely worth it. This is not an operation that you really want to do by hand um, if you want to retain that really nice uh, fitment between the aluminum chassis and the bottom metal and the action itself. Um, you could mill it all out and then bed it, but I don't recommend that. And uh, Eric did try <laughs> initially on when we were thinking about doing this video and uh, we realized very soon off that we just needed to send it off to some professionals, actually had a milling machine and could just chalk this thing up and bzz, buzz it out. But anyways, the bottom metal does have to be fitted, but once you get through that step, the stock and everything is pretty much ready to have everything just dropped right in. 
But um, as far as the trigger goes, we did replace the trigger in this. Like I said, it comes stock with the Xmark Pro trigger uh, from the factory, which is adjustable down to about three and a half pounds, I believe. However, we decided to use a uh, Jewel HVR trigger and uh, it's a fully adjustable match style trigger and uh, I bought one a little while back from Brownells to put in my rig and Eric shot mine and I have that thing adjusted down to like half a pound. It's ridiculous. I mean that trigger is so so light. It's almost like you breathe on it and you know you're gonna fire the shot off. But um, excellent excellent trigger and in order to in order to swap the triggers out on these there's just a couple of hardened pins that just need to be pushed out and you need to be careful uh, to retain your um, bolt release mechanism and your spring so you definitely want to keep those components squared away there and uh, it's very very easy process just to swap the triggers out just with a little bit of care um, once you have the trigger swapped out basically what we did was uh, install the badger base and i i have done a full video on installing a uh, Badger scope base and uh, quality rings and an optic. We uh, we installed a Leupold Mark IV, four and a half to fourteen power by fifty on top of my Remington seven hundred. And uh, you can go and check out that video for the full details. But basically, it's a real simple process. You have uh, some plug holes that are um, drilled into the uh, receiver here. You pull those plugs out and then uh, just degrease everything drop the mount in place and uh, the mount that we decided to use is a badger is a 20 minute of angle elevation so it has a slight cant to it so you get more uh, elevation out of your scope turret uh, for longer range shooting but basically you're going to just degrease those holes in the uh, in the receiver itself degrease the screws that come with the badger base and then the uh, base itself has a small flat that interfaces with the uh, front face of the ejection port here and basically that just has to be pushed forward into full contact and then you can just snug your screws down to the specified torque which I believe is about 15 inch pounds. Once you have that installed we get to the uh, spur mount. Now Eric and I thought about these mounts for a long time and we looked at the price of them and it was just astronomical. These are $400 mounts but you know you think quality and you see so many precision rifle shooters using the spur rings and uh, one of the unique things about these ring sets here is that they do come in a variety of different patterns and such. They have different heights, different ring sizes, of course, just like anything else. But this is a one piece, all aluminum housing here. And the unique thing is this 45 degree offset with the rings themselves. So the reason that they do that is because on a traditional set of rings, you have yeah, you know, basically the, the screws that hold the two ring halves together at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And what that does is kind of come through and it obscures your uh, windage turret. So you have to kind of move your head over so you can see your turret completely. So with these, it has a really low profile flat on each side. So you get full view of your turret, which is really neat. And also, these things come with uh, metric pattern screws. Um, you got six per ring half. So this is a really, really solid engagement. Plus, you have uh, these small little cuts that are in the uh, ring halves themselves. And what that allows for is like rosin or glue to be used to actually hold your scope in place a little bit better for really, really extreme stuff. I mean, you're talking like, you know, professionals that are overseas or something along those lines or, uh, you know, other law enforcement personnel like SWAT teams such as that that are riding around in vehicles and bouncing all over the place and all that. And, you know, their optic and the rifle is really taking a beating and there's a lot of abuse that's going on. You know, a lesser quality set of rings may not hold the scope properly. You know, if it gets off and then they take that shot and, you know, there's no telling what might happen. But with this type of system, you know, you know that everything's going to be 100%. Plus, the spurs actually have a uh, bubble level mounted right in the back of the mount. So instead of having like a secondary level, like this little flatline ops thing that I put on my uh, M1A and then I ran on my 700 for a while, this is a $130 unit. But the reason I bought this was because it has kind of a, an elevation adjustment here where you can actually just clamp this thing on and then you can fine tune the level. So I thought that was really neat that you didn't have to you know, get it squared away when you mounted your optic. Plus, it's in two halves, and it makes it really easy. It's low profile, so you can slip it between your scope tube, uh, like the body of your scope and your ring set and your base. But that's an expensive unit, but most of these are going to be anywhere between about $50 and $100 in a lot of cases. But the spur has that built right in. It's got a really solid locking lug here, and then also the uh, four bolts that hold the 
uh, mount to the base actually have index marks right here on the side. So what you can do is you can torque your bolts down and then you can mark your bolts here, the heads, to match the index mark there and you know exactly where your base has to be torqued back to in order to retain zero without having the proper tools in the field. Now there are some small torque tools that are called fix-it tools that are basically a small like T-handle that has a particular bit size on it that you need for your uh, particular application and it's got preset torque. So say you want 25 inch pounds. Well, you can buy a fix-it tool for that and just go click, 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 click and be done. But for those of you that don't carry tools like that in the field, if you have a screwdriver with the proper bit, you can just line those index marks back up if the scope did have to come off of the rifle for whatever reason, and then it's good to go. In order to mount this, it's not unlike anything else that you see on the market. Um, it is a one-piece base, so ease of installation is a lot better. Um, you don't have two rings to mess around with and whatnot. You've got basically predetermined spacing and whatnot. And then also, there's a small wedge that comes with the uh, spur mount here, and there's a cut in the uh, base here. And what that does is allow you to slide the wedge in as you're tightening the rings down and that will level the scope. So there's no messing with bubble levels, there's you know, no leveling the rifle, no leveling the scope and all that stuff. It's all just stick the wedge in, flatten it up, tighten your rings down, and you're good to go. One of the other neat things about the spur mount is it has accessory mounting points all over the mount. So for uh, the guys that run like night vision clip-on devices, there's a rail for that. So you basically just mount that sucker, pop it right in front. You can also run um, like a little red dot on the side here for close-up engagements. So you have a 45 degree offset right here. So you can put um, like a small red dot right here on the front uh, ring. That way it doesn't interfere with your elevation or windage turrets. So that's a real neat feature there. They do sell all sorts of little Picatinny and uh, um, specialized like RMR type mounts. They have a mount for an aim point, all that kind of stuff. So all that can be purchased directly from Spur. And uh, these things are made in Sweden. So very nice quality, very, very high quality. Um, but besides that, I mean, that's pretty much the complete build. It's not really a build in the big scheme of things. The, the biggest part of it was actually getting the, uh, getting the stock milled out for the bottom metal. And that was a procedure that we did not do here. We did send it off to a facility for that. But everything else we did here just on our own accord. And um, one other note about this base here, uh, there's a lot of like custom actions out there that actually have the scope base just it's it's an integral part of the receiver like like the defiance actions and such as that like the really really high quality actions they'll have a scope rail built right into it machined into it solid as it can be now the badger does have some small ports on the bottom of the mount and what those are for is for hardened pins to be installed in the receiver and they interface with the scope rail itself and give you kind of like 100% contact, so it's pinned in place, so there's no way that the, the scope uh, mount is going to pop back and forth or anything like that or come loose or anything like that. There is a little bit of wiggle room in the, um, in the mount for the screws and such, but you just push it forward and tighten those things down and put some red Loctite on them. Not really a big deal. But we thought we'd just kind of go over the process and you know some of the reasoning that we used for uh, picking the components that we did for this particular build and you guys did see it in action a little bit in the Liberty video that we posted and uh, that's where all the questions came from regarding the details on this particular rig and uh, like I said we have a 20 inch rig as well that we are set up and uh, we're going to be taking these guns out we're going to do chrono work we're going to do grouping and we're going to take them out to longer range and see how they both perform because a lot of guys say that you know to get out to long range, you have to run a longer barrel. So we've got a 24 inch, but then, you know, kind of the, the, normal, the normal thing is like a 20 inch 308 is kind of the, the happy medium. And, uh, you know, I've got a load that pushes pretty hot out of a 20 inch barrel. And I'm really curious, because we haven't chronoed it yet out of this 24, so I'm really wanting to see what it'll do out of that, that gun. But uh, anyways, guys, stay tuned for that. Those videos will be coming down the pipeline, and uh, hope you enjoy this quick look at the build here. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. We're gonna have a lot more on in the future. Take care.